guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. I've had some requests lately to show how I have been blocking my cotton dishcloths. So this is one that I have previously blocked, and this is one that has come straight off the needles. You know, see how it kind of like curls, and it's really not, well, it's not pretty, and it doesn't really quite sit square. Now when I block mine, as you can see, I have a little bit of a curve here. I don't make them exactly perfectly square, but through this process, you can do that. So let me show you what you're going to need in order to block them. This is my pressing board. Basically what this is, is this is an old, one of those wooden TV tray table things that, you see the wooden tray in there? That I've covered with a fabric batting well, fabric and batting, basically. And as you saw in the back, that it is, it, ooh. Pins are coming out. That's why you can see back there. This is just pinned on so that it's not permanent. I can easily take it off. I'm going to put a link up here to Lisa Capen. She's the one that showed me how to do this. You can put an old towel in there. Actually, I think I do have batting and a towel in there. It's been a little bit, well, it's probably been just a couple months since I made it, but anyway, let me get back to where we were. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because I can put a pin into this. If you're able to put a pin into your pressing board, then that's gonna work for you. Otherwise, you might wanna get like a big fluffy towel, something that you can easily press hot and steam with your iron on it and you can pin your dishcloth to that surface. So however that works for you, whether it's just a standard ironing board, something you've created, or just a folded up towel. I have a spray bottle of just basic water right out of the tap, nothing fancy. And I have some glass head pins. Now the glass head pins are really important because you're going to be ironing right over the pins or right near them and you don't want to melt them. So if you have some type of a pin that's going to melt, maybe either pick up some glass head pins or some of those T pins that don't have anything on the top of it at all. Uh, if you have none of that really, you can actually just take some type of a sewing needle. As long as it's something you're going to be able to push into this and pull back it out without losing it, any type of pin is going to work. Uh, even if you had to use a safety pin, that would work. It's just going to make it a little bit a little extra because with a safety pin you got to open it and close it so it's a little bit extra but it's not like it's a big deal and in case you wonder why I have this in one of these nice little sealed containers this is a magnetic pin cushion well one of those plastic pin things I think I showed it to you before where if you take the pins and you just drop them they all go into the right direction except for maybe a couple here or there and the reason I keep it in this is there's no protection of this from my animals. I have one of my cats, Miss Mocha, my calico. She likes to go up to a pin cushion and just take her little front teeth and pull pins out and then just drop them around on the floor. Now the cats don't have full access to my craft room. I do close it when I'm not in there and at night, but if I just run to the bathroom or to get a drink or to do whatever, check the mail, I don't always close the door. So I wanna make sure my pins are going to be safe from the cat and also, if I drop it, they generally stay inside here. Now, as a side note, because you guys know, I always have a side note, I pick this container up at the Dollar Tree. You just get one of them for a dollar, but it has this little gasket in here and everything like this. Now they come in a variety of sizes. This one I hadn't used for anything yet because it's just, um, for what I use them for, it's kind of an awkward size, but I have smaller ones that I keep sugar and I keep my flaxseed in it, and I have taller ones that Rob keeps cookies in. The cookies stay fresh for weeks and weeks. He's actually had lemon cookies in there for probably about four months, and they're still nice and fresh. So if you happen to see any of the ones like this up at the Dollar Tree, that's a really good idea to pick them up if you want to store things. So far, you know, knock on wood, because there's wood in there, I haven't had any problems with any type of ants or other types of bugs getting into it either. Because if the air can't get in, then generally an ant can't get in. Fingers crossed. I also have... 
I think these were called at Walmart like a bar towel. I just use it as a pressing cloth. So anything you happen to have that's gonna work as a pressing cloth is going to work for this. I would definitely stick with something a white or a neutral color because I'm going to use a spray bottle and spritz water all over it. And then we're gonna use our iron and we're gonna steam iron it too. So you wanna make sure it's not gonna use like red and put it on a white dishcloth that's gonna bleed everywhere. If you want your piece to be perfectly square and exact, maybe try cutting out something from like a manila file folder or something that's exact the same size. If you have a surface that you could possibly put some type of, I guess you could put pins in it to mark out your, let's see what size are these. These are gonna come out to be about six inch square for me. It's gonna be different on whatever size needles and how you knit yours and how big they are. But you can go ahead and mark out a spot. I probably wouldn't do a Sharpie on my pressing board here because when I press it, it could get onto my fabrics. But something that you could mark the exact size so you can bring this to that square. Because well, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down and I'm gonna put pins in the corner. Now sometimes my corners get a little rounded because I didn't do the extra rows like I should have. And I just, I'm just going to go ahead, let me zoom into this corner for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin and I'm just going to go in. I'm going to go in at an angle like this, just so that this is going to go into the dishcloth on top and it's going to catch into my, my, my ironing board here. So if I have to, I just pull out my corner just a little bit with my pin and I put it in. I'm not going in and back out. It's just going to stay just like that. Might just hold this corner. Sorry about the shadow. Hold this corner down a little and pull this one to where I want it to be. If you had a measurement that was sitting here and you knew if you had your measurement that you knew exactly where it was, you'd want to put this pin in your first corner Put this pin in another corner and if you have to stretch your cloth to reach those corners that's what you're going to do these dishcloths are 100 percent cotton and you can go ahead and give them a little tug and a little stretch now mine's probably just waving out here a little bit so maybe i want to bring this one give that a little bit of a tug stretch it more i'm trying to put my pin right through some of the yarn and not just through a hole because that way it will hold that shape so look at this just eyeballing it this one looks pretty good so now that i have this one and this one this corner looks a little off because it's kind of veering in i'm going to go ahead and pull this one too and give that a little bit of a stretch and if you've had to give an extra amount of stretch maybe you want to put two pins in there maybe it feels like it's going to slip so i'm going to go ahead and stick a second pin in no big deal you can put pins down along the sides here if you wish. I usually just do the four corners. If you were pinning something larger like a shawl or something, you would put more pins along the way. But this is just a simple dishcloth. It's going to kind of get a little bit out of shape anyways once you start washing them and using them. But that's how you can go ahead and do that. Set my pins aside. I don't double up on my pressing cloth, but you can if you want to. And here is where you can kind of see the shadow of the dishcloth. I'm just going to kind of spritz this. I'm not saturating it. I just want to put enough water on there. I might saturate my pressing cloth, but I don't want to saturate my dishcloth. Just enough water to make it create some steam. Now my iron is already going to create steam, but I want it to do a little bit extra. I have my iron set at the cotton setting, full steam. Now when I start pressing this, I don't want to leave it in just one spot. I don't want to take a chance of possibly burning anything. Just like when you're pressing your clothes or something, you're going to be moving your iron around. You're not leaving it in one spot. So I just kind of, I am gently just hovering and barely touching the pressing cloth. I'm not forcing it down and I'm not staying up super high. I want to make the contact so it does steam, but I don't want to squish it down because I don't want to, you know, flatten out the uh, dishcloth. I want to just 
let it remember that this is where I want it to be and I want it to stay it at this shape and this size. Now you could press this until it's absolutely dry, which is pretty close, but generally when I'm steaming it, it tends to stay just a little bit damp because you're constantly putting that steam through there. But the extra water on your that you spritz down onto your pressing cloth here is just going to help create that extra steam. It's going to tell it, hey, this is where you're supposed to be. Please stay in this position. And then when you take it off, you see how the stitches have kind of bloomed open a little bit. They're not all scrunched together. I don't have it perfectly square everywhere, but I know that this is going to be nice. It's not that curled up, rolled up mess, so that when I go ahead and I ship it out or I give it as gifts, it's gonna have a better presence to it. Now, I do not remove any of my pins or move this until it's cooled down. It's not burning hot to the touch. It still feels slightly damp. It's gonna go ahead and air dry. And then when I just walk away, I put away whatever I happen to be working on, I tidy up something, go get a drink, whatever's gonna take you about five minutes, go pull out your other dishcloths or work on a dishcloth so you could be knitting while you're waiting for this one to cool down. And once it does cool down, then you'll be able to go ahead and pull out your pins and you'll have your dishcloth all ready to go and to send away to friends and family. This is still just barely warm and slightly, not even, I wouldn't even call it damp, but you can tell that it's just got some heat and moisture to it. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these pins. You see how it didn't even shrivel in and shrink in at all? Which means it's, the yarn is going to have its memory and it's gonna remember exactly where I want it to be. So even if I set this aside and I keep it till Christmas, I would go ahead and put them in a container to where I can stack them flat like this. That way I wouldn't have to worry about going ahead and blocking them again. As you can see, they're all different because sometimes yarn is a little bit thicker. Some, some dyes, like especially red dye, tends to make yarn blossom a little bit more and get thicker. And sometimes maybe I didn't knit it as large or I skipped a couple rows or whatever, maybe um, when, you, when you're when you having a stressful day, you tend to knit tighter, and when you're more relaxed, you tend to knit looser. But since they're dishcloths, it's really not gonna matter. But if you're really concerned, as I said, about having, but if you're really concerned about them having the same size, go ahead and find a way to mark out somehow onto your area, especially like with pins and stuff, you can go ahead and mark it out and bring all your dishcloths to the same exact size so if you're giving them as a set they're all gonna match and as I pick up oh, there's still a pin so how many of you actually caught that I left a pin in there before I realized it you see how he just kind of stays in that shape yes there's a little bit of a curve here but as I said I'm not looking for perfection on these these are actually just dishcloths they're not anything fancy to them but once you go ahead and give them as gift if you find it still a little bit maybe you want to give it a little bit of a tug while it's still it's cooled down but you still have a chance that if you want to you can go ahead and just give that little extra tug if you need to and it will still go ahead and do it and if it's totally wonky when you're taking all your pins out just go ahead and put it back in and do it again you could flip it over and do it from the other side it doesn't really matter. It's once again, it's a cotton dishcloth that's going to get wet. It's going to go through the washer and dryer numerous times anyway. Some people put these through the dishwasher and it's going to turn a little bit wonky in the end anyhow. So it'll be perfect to send off to your friends and family. And that right now is how I've been steam blocking my dishcloths. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.